Hi guys, welcome to Make This Honest. I'm Kevin, that's Tyler, and that is another project. Hey Tyler, do you want to plug that thing in? Hey Tyler, you want to turn that knob right there? Who says you don't need another project? So folks, a few months ago, during the summer, I picked up a free treadmill that had a belt issue. I figured, take a gamble and see what we could do with it. I finally got around to finding out what the belt issue was, and it's actually the conveyor, the large belt, where do you stand on? And we found an issue with the brain, the upper control board. The buttons are all messed up, the LEDs are messed up. So I figured what an awesome repurposing project to power a re repower a machine a lot of guys use treadmill motors for drill presses lathes uh, mills all sorts of other stuff so what we are doing with tyler's help we are repowering and eliminating eliminating the upper control board of this treadmill we have added a rheostat not a rheostat a potentiometer right there with a minimalist knob We've been able to eliminate, this is actually the control board that comes from the upper control panel that basically reads the speed signal from the belt and tells the motor how fast to go. That was really our issue. So we've been able to eliminate that. We're going to pop over. Tyler's going to explain what we are going to do real quick. So guys, starting off here, we do not want to run it off of our board. We want to be able to take it and run it off of just our speed circuit board which involves taking our three wires off of our control circuit board and an hooking up a potentiometer. Our PWM and our MC60 are connected by these three wires, three single spade terminals on one end and then a single connector on the other. We're just gonna cut that off and that's gonna allow us to hook up to each terminal on our potentiometer. So I'm letting Tyler do the soldering. He's got much steadier hands than I do. But now that we've got our three wires soldered back onto the potentiometer, what we've done is hooked up those three wires to our MC60 control board. I've just drilled a quick hole in this front panel to mount our potentiometer. I really owe a lot of credit to Barry from Barry's Workshop. We have went through countless videos and all sorts of hacks on how to repower treadmill motors and things like that. It came down to a really simple video. Barry explains it so well. To go to the motor, and I understand that there's a thermal switch in the motor that if the motor overheats, it'll, uh, it'll shut off the power to it. So you can either run it with or without that. I like the idea of having a protection circuit, and I don't think it'll affect the power. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it in. So I'm going to go run from the power cord through the motor. And fortunately, there's a terminal connector here. I'll just plug that in. And at this point... Okay, so we should have power when we plug it in. As you see our red lights, we have power. Now without the circuit control board, it's out of the picture. When I turn this potentiometer switch, it should run off of, with the thermal protection switch we kept, and our power. I don't see any smoke, so... So at this point of our project, we have a motor, 
motor controller, our power supply, power, potentiometer, but what we don't have is an actual base or a platform for this repower project, guys. I am not going to use this metal framework. This was really just to illustrate half of a treadmill and how we can get it running. So now the next part of the project is where I drop the bomb on tell you what I am going to build. If you guys have not already guessed, there was a little teaser earlier in the video. If you watch that, paid attention closely. I am building a desktop mini lathe. Not like your $600 versions you can find most places on the internet with a geared head. A lot of them have plastic gears. No, I am actually building a precision lathe. I'm going to source tag tools components. I already have a little shopping cart set up of the components I'm going to build, but we need to address some issues first. I'm not going to be building the lathe itself tomorrow. We need to address some issues. So I'm going to make a nice wood base for it. I need a place for a control panel for my switches, and I'm going to be adding some more switches actually. We're going to add like a repetitive task type switch. So let's say for instance you're going to use this treadmill motor or this assembly as a repower for a drill press. Well what happens, let's say you dial your drill press into 1800 RPM and you're going to drill a few holes. Well you're going to shut off your drill press. If it's not wired a certain way when you fire back up your treadmill motor you have to actually take your potentiometer all the way down back to zero the motor control resets and then you can ramp your speed back up. So for intermittent tasks, you're going to turn off your drill press, you want to fire it back up, be at the same RPM, drill one hole, turn it back off. It's actually adding that switch will allow you to do that. Another thing we're going to add is you know, some sort of LED or LCD display for the RPM. So we'll have to add like a speed sensor also. And we're also going to have to address the flywheel. It's really rusty. It looks like it's pressed on. There's no Allen set, set screw or anything that holds it on. I'm unsure if I can get it off or not. So we'll have to get creative with how we remove that rust and actually source the belt. I'm not sure how I'm going to convert that belt, but we'll figure it out when we get there. But the following videos are going to address our wooden base, our switch panels, our LED or LCDs displays, and uh, how we modify the rest of this, guys. Stay tuned to Making Sawdust. If you're still here at the end of this video right here, consider subscribing. Give me a like. Give me a thumbs up. Click that bell for all your notifications. I also really want to give a shout out to Barry at Barry's Workshop. A very informative video that I watched to his and a very good guy man um, I am just a guy on YouTube sharing how I do it much like Barry is doing so neither one of us are experts maybe Barry is uh, sorry Barry <laughs> but I want you to go check out his channel um, tell him you stopped by came over for making sawdust guys thank you again